So this is a bit of a brain teaser. How can you use ice cold water to boil hot water? The principles behind it are pretty straightforward, but they lead to this counterintuitive demonstration. So here's how you do it. You put some water in a bottle. I've dyed it red here to make it easier to see. You pop it in the microwave for a couple of minutes until it's boiling. By the way, if you wanna know how I filmed the inside of a microwave, I made a whole video about that, link in the description and in the card there. Once the water's boiling, quickly cap off the end and then pour ice cold water over the bottle. And there you go, the water starts to boil. Isn't that amazing? So here's the explanation. You've got boiling water in the bottom of a bottle that's releasing water vapor into the top of the bottle. Water vapor just means water in the gas state gas water. So you seal the top and it may continue to boil, releasing water vapor into the bottle and so increasing the pressure inside there. At the same time, the temperature is going down because heat is being released to the environment. Now, remember the boiling point of water doesn't just depend on temperature, it depends on pressure as well. Like if you went to the top of Mount Everest and tried to boil some water, it would boil at a much lower temperature because as you lower the pressure, the boiling point temperature goes down. It's why it's hard to brew a good cup of tea at the top of Mount Everest. And so eventually you reach a tipping point where the temperature of the water has gone down enough so that it's below the boiling point at that specific pressure. And then what you do is you pour cold water over it. What that does is cool down the gas in the top of the bottle. And eventually you cool down the water vapor below the boiling point so it condenses back into liquid water, which reduces the pressure inside the bottle. And eventually the pressure will go down enough that the temperature of the water is now above the boiling point of water at that lower pressure and so it starts to boil. Crucially, as you're pouring the cold water over the bottle, it doesn't much reduce the temperature of the liquid water. That's because liquid water has a much higher heat capacity than water in the gas state. That means that as you pour cold water over the bottle, it's removing heat from the liquid water, but because it has such a high capacity for heat, the temperature isn't going down very much. Whereas water vapor has a lower heat capacity so that when you remove heat from it, the temperature goes down quickly. I just took the cap off and it's left the seal bit at the top there. And listen to this when I, when I try and open the seal. Did you pause the video and come up with an explanation for yourself? Is it different to mine? Let me know in the comments. Okay, confession time. I stole the idea for this video from another channel, which I don't normally like to do for a couple of reasons. Uh, firstly, I don't like to be an arse. And secondly, I like to make videos that haven't been made before, or at least if a video has been made before, but I feel like I can add something to the discussion, then I'll make a video. So I copied this idea from someone called Charles Marzacco. That's the name of the channel as well. And the video on his channel is quite old. It's in standard definition. It's three by four. And I thought it could benefit from the 4K widescreen 50 frames per second treatment. I hope you agree. Please help me to assuage my guilt by visiting Charles's channel and showing him some love. The link is in the card and in the description and it'll be on the end screen as well. Two more interesting things before I go. The first is that I witnessed superheated water for the first time ever while I was setting up the demonstration. Watch this. A sudden steam explosion. Steam explosions happen when the water is superheated, when it's heated beyond its boiling point without it boiling. And the reason water can be heated beyond its boiling point without boiling is because Although the molecules have enough energy to turn into water vapor, they don't have enough energy to form bubbles. To form a bubble, you need to overcome surface tension. So there's an extra little bit of energy that you need. But once a bubble is formed, then you've got this nucleating site. You have an internal surface within the liquid across which water vapor can pass. So that bubble expands very quickly. It promotes the formation of other bubbles and you get this steam explosion. 
The reason steam explosions are quite rare is because of the way we tend to heat water. So you'll heat it in a container that has imperfections on the surface, like scratches that hold on to microscopic bubbles. So you already have these nucleating sites ready to go. Also, if you're heating water on a stove, then you've got an uneven distribution of temperature. So on the bottom of the pan, you can have water that's heated beyond the point where it can overcome surface tension. So boiling happens down there, but it's not this sudden explosion of steam because the water above it doesn't have much energy. It's maybe even still below boiling point. And so that's why it's most common in microwaves because the container you use might be a brand new mug that has a gloss finish and because you're heating the water more evenly than you would on the stove. So it's something to be aware of. It's, it's dangerous. Like you could take water out of the microwave, you think it hasn't boiled yet, and as soon as you put a spoon in, that introduces bubbles in, into the water. You get this explosion of steam and it's all over your hands. On the subject of safety, interesting thing number two, if you rapidly heat and cool glass, uh, this can happen. That's called thermal shock. The, the point is, this demonstration is somewhat dangerous, like boiling water is dangerous, superheated water is dangerous, broken glass is dangerous. If you want to try it for yourself, number one, be an adult, and number two, what I've told you now does not constitute a risk assessment. You need to assess the risks for yourself. By the way, in case it's been bugging you, that's where my daughter punched me in the eye. I mean, I assume it was an accident. I hope it was an accident. This video was made possible by my patrons on Patreon and Skillshare. If you don't already know, Skillshare is an online video learning community that offers membership with meaning. And the thing I wanna tell you about this week is an aspect of Skillshare that maybe you hadn't considered. So I use Skillshare for um, professional stuff, but I also use it in my personal life. So professionally, I'm using it to learn about animation in After Effects. And then privately, in my private life, we're, we're renovating the kitchen. We're knocking walls down at the moment. You know, we need to have an, a, at least a passing understanding of interior design. And in the past, that's something I would just muddle through, like Google some stuff, read some articles, and try and understand it. But these days, I, I really see the benefit of online video courses. They're a great way to become pretty good at something really quickly. And you know, it takes an hour of your life and that stays with you for ages. It's not just videos about interior design and animations in After Effects. It'd be weird if it was. There's everything in between. So I encourage you to take a look. And as you're looking, think about how you could use it in your personal life and in your professional life. You get access to absolutely everything for $10 a month. And because Skillshare is sponsoring this video, the first 500 people to go to school.sh forward slash Steve Mold 6 will get two months absolutely free, no strings. The link is also in the description. So check it out today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to hit subscribe and I'll see you next time.